everyone wants to know about the latest sub-MOA rifle. But is it a genuine path to pinpoint accuracy or just fancy marketing? The truth might surprise you, because there's more to rifle precision than brand names and hype. In this video, we'll talk about why bolt-action rifles consistently beat ARs and lever guns in terms of raw accuracy, why so many PRS shooters, including me, swear by them, and why manufacturers sometimes spin marketing narratives that skip over the real reasons bolt guns dominate. Let's be honest, rifle technology itself isn't new. These platforms have been around for well over a century, and the underlying physics remain unchanged. Now, I know some of you don't like math, so don't worry, there won't be any math in this video. The moment the firing pin strikes the primer, the physics of internal ballistics kick in. The primer ignites a small explosive charge, which ignites the main gunpowder load inside the cartridge case. This rapidly burns, not explosively, but as a controlled combustion reaction, creating an expanding cloud of hot gas. This gas exerts immense pressure, often exceeding 50,000 psi, forcing the bullet forward. The bullet engages the rifling inside the barrel spinning due to the helical grooves. This spin stabilizes the bullet aerodynamically, preventing it from tumbling. Once the bullet exits the barrel, external ballistics take over, where air resistance, gravity, and velocity determine its trajectory. The closer it hits to the shooter's point of aim, the better. But most of us already know all about this. So let's talk about bolt guns. Even though new models come with slick ads claiming proprietary innovations, Accuracy still comes down to three basic concepts, having fewer moving parts, tighter tolerances, and rock-solid lockup. If those elements are in place, nothing else can really compete. Tolerances matter. Materials matter. Consistency in how each round is chambered matters. You can show me a flashy semi-auto that claims to achieve sub-MOA groups, but I'll pick a well-built bolt action any day of the week if my goal is hitting that precise point of aim time after time. As a longtime hunter and PRS shooter, I appreciate and support our right to own whichever rifle we prefer. I love the AR platform for a lot of reasons, including capacity and modularity, and I enjoy lever guns for their nostalgia and practicality under certain conditions. But there's no denying that when your priority is pure, repeatable precision, especially at longer ranges, a bolt gun usually wins. This is not just an opinion. It's backed by the principles of physics and mechanical design. To me, it's the reason you'll see snipers, competition shooters, and long-range hunters gravitate toward bolt actions. Still, that begs the question, what exactly gives bolt actions their advantage? One key reason is that bolt guns stay locked until you manually cycle the action. This means there are minimal disruptions to the rifle's overall movement as the bullet travels down the barrel. By contrast, a semi-auto rifle, whether it's gas-operated, piston-driven, or anything in between, has an automatic cycle that starts moving the bolt when the bullet is still in the bore. We might assume that everything happens so fast it's over in a blink, but the truth is that even a slight motion in the system translates to changes in the barrel harmonics or alignment. If you want maximum consistency, you don't want the bolt or any other part shifting around before the projectile exits. Lever guns have their own quirks. Not only do most lever rifles rely on rear-locking lugs rather than front-locking ones, but they also come with two-piece stocks and tubular magazines. A tubular magazine usually forces the shooter to use round-nosed or flat-nosed bullets for safety reasons, and those bullet shapes aren't ideal for precision at longer distances. There are a few exceptions, but in general, for most lever guns, this rule applies. Oh, and then there's the action itself, which has to be looser just so the lever can operate smoothly. That looseness equates to a tiny bit of flex. It might not seem like much, but it's enough to affect shot placement when you're trying to stack rounds in the exact same hole. Now, some people will say that modern manufacturing has improved semi-automatic accuracy to the point that the old rules don't apply. I'm not going to deny that we've come a long way. With advanced machining techniques, free-floating handguards, premium barrels, adjustable gas blocks, and carefully matched components, you really can build an AR-type rifle that groups exceptionally well. However, these rifles tend to cost significantly more than a basic bolt gun that can shoot similar or better groups. On top of that, even with high-end parts, the mechanical fundamentals of a semi-auto introduce extra vibrations, 
and at least a brief window of movement during the firing sequence. The bolt gun simply doesn't have that to contend with. There's another factor often overlooked. The recoil impulse in a semi-auto is more complex than in a bolt action. A bolt gun experiences a single jolt as the round is fired. A semi-auto, you get that first push from the round going off, then a rearward motion as the bolt travels backwards, and a forward slam when the bolt returns to battery. Over multiple shots, that can create subtle differences in how the rifle reacts. A shooter can develop good technique to mitigate this, but if we're talking mechanical consistency, the single-stage recoil in a bolt gun is inherently simpler. Let's pause for a second. I'm curious about your experiences. Have you ever put a semi-auto up against a bolt action in a serious accuracy contest? And if so, did the semi-auto live up to the hype? Let me know in the comments below, because I would love to hear from fellow Pro 2A folks about how these rifles have performed for you. Getting back to the differences, we should talk about the lockup. Front locking lugs on a bolt action create a tight seal around the cartridge. The moment the action is closed, everything is snug. Any slight flex or give is minimized. In many lever or pump designs, the lugs are located further to the rear, which can create a springier feel under pressure. That bit of movement can shift the bolt face just enough to open the group size when you're shooting at paper targets with tight tolerances. Then there's the matter of extraction. A bolt gun allows for strong positive extraction with a manual camming force you control. That means the engineers can build the rifle to close up extremely tight when the bolt is locked because they're not worried about an automatic mechanism needing slack to function reliably in adverse conditions. Semi-autos, especially ARs, are typically built to run in dirty conditions, so tolerances must be somewhat forgiving. They need to feed different ammo types without jamming. They need to keep cycling even after a few hundred rounds, or if dust finds its way into the action. That requirement for reliability is great for home defense or multi-purpose rifle but it conflicts with the pursuit of the tightest possible mechanical precision. With a bolt gun, you manually load each round into the chamber, so the rifle can have extremely close tolerances that otherwise might choke a self-loading design. Furthermore, many ARs and other semi-automatic rifles rely on a gas system that taps off some of the propellant gases to operate the action. When that gas leaves the barrel through the gas port, it can create additional vibration and slightly alter barrel harmonics while the bullet is still in the bore. Yes, the bullet travels fast, but so do the pressure waves. A well-tuned gas system or a high-quality barrel can mitigate these effects, but it's tough to eliminate them entirely. A bolt gun doesn't face that issue because there's no gas port to siphon off energy for cycling. You get a purely free-floated barrel that vibrates the same way with each shot. Precision versus accuracy is another point worth noting. Accuracy is defined as how close you get to your intended point of impact. Precision is about how tightly your shots group. A rifle can be accurate without being super precise. You might hit the target near the bullseye most of the time, but if your group is a little scattered, that shows the rifle, or the shooter, lacks precision. Bolt actions excel in both areas because they're built with the assumption you'll want repeatable precision. Many semi-autos can be zeroed to hit a target center mass, but the group sizes can open up more than a comparably priced bolt action. Lock time is another subtle advantage for bolt guns. Lock time is the period between the sear releasing the firing pin and the actual ignition of the primer. The shorter it is, the less chance the shooter has to move or disturb the rifle during that critical moment. Bolt guns have very short lock times, whereas most semi-auto triggers, especially if they're mil-spec or not particularly refined, can have slightly longer lock times. In practical shooting, that may not matter much for rapid fire or close ranges. But for tight groups at distance, every millisecond counts. Then there's ammo. Semi-autos typically require full-length resizing of brass to ensure reliable feeding. That means each piece of brass has more wiggle room in the chamber to function flawlessly during cycling. By contrast, many bolt gun shooters do something called neck sizing, or partial resizing of their brass. This approach keeps the brass more perfectly fitted to the specific chamber dimensions of their rifle which can help with shot-to-shot -shot consistency. Add in the possibility of bullet tips getting dinged or scuffed while feeding from a magazine under spring tension in a semi-auto, and you start to see how bolt guns maintain an edge for utmost precision. Lever guns, despite their legacy and popularity among many of us who love the classic design, often have more limitations. Those two-piece stocks can shift slightly under recoil, 
A tubular magazine can affect the harmonics of the barrel, especially if the barrel and mag tube are secured together at intervals. Plus, the overall action can't be as stiff and as well made as a bolt gun that locks up at the front. Yes, lever guns can be wonderful hunting rifles for moderate ranges, and many have proven themselves in the field for decades. If all you're doing is hunting deer within 150 yards, you may never notice the difference. But once you stretch out to 300 yards, 500 yards, or beyond, it becomes more apparent why folks choose bolt guns for that kind of shot. Speaking of real-world use, let's bring up the military and law enforcement angle. Snipers and many police marksmen have historically used bolt actions for a reason. They need that first shot hit probability to be as high as possible. They may only get one shot, and it has to count. The inherent consistency of a bolt action is a major factor in that decision. Sure, some militaries now field semi-auto designated marksman rifles for certain roles, and there are advanced semis that get decent groups, but the gold standard for unwavering precision in the field remains the bolt action. Competitive shooting, especially in the realm of PRS, precision rifle series, also demonstrates how bolt guns thrive. In many events, shooters need to engage small targets at distances well beyond 500 yards. They'll typically choose bolt-action rifles that have top-tier barrels, carefully bedded actions, and high-quality triggers. Even though modern AR-10s chambered in calibers like 6.5 Creedmoor can do fairly well, they're often heavier, more finicky, and still lag behind the overall consistency that bolt actions provide. Also, let's not forget cost. A sub-MOA bolt gun will always be far more affordable than a sub-MOA semi-auto. If you want an AR to print half-inch groups at 100 yards, you'll likely end up spending several thousand dollars on a bespoke semi-auto with a premium barrel, an upgraded bolt carrier group, a match trigger, a free float handguard, and possibly adjustable gas components. By the time you've upgraded everything, the price can skyrocket. Meanwhile, there are off-the-shelf bolt guns that can achieve similar or better group sizes at a significantly lower cost. This is one reason so many new shooters who want to maximize precision for their dollar end up with a bolt action. At this point, some critics of bolt guns might ask, if everything is so wonderful about a bolt action, why bother with an AR or a lever gun at all? Here's my perspective. Each platform has strengths that suit different purposes. For defense, many prefer a semi-auto carbine, and that's perfectly logical. For a brush gun, when you're out hog hunting at close range, a lever gun might be ideal especially if you favor a more traditional look and feel. But if you're talking about that ultimate long-range shot, where you want to place the bullet exactly where you intend it to go with minimal margin of error, the bolt action is key. We can also look at the nature of recoil. In semis, the cycling bolt can help reduce felt recoil somewhat, making rapid follow-up shots faster. That's a benefit in certain tactical or competitive scenarios where speed matters more than grouping your shots the size of a dime. With lever guns, you're operating that lever by hand, which can shift your sight picture in ways that some folks don't mind at closer distances. But for that serious discipline of slow, deliberate, carefully placed shots, the bolt gun's single recoil impulse is simpler to manage for consistent muzzle position. Also, there's the element of tradition and proven history. The reason so many of us in the Pro 2A community gravitate to bolt guns for precision is that we've witnessed them excel time and again. Whether in hunting fields, at the range, or in competition. A well-designed bolt action, combined with a free-floated barrel, a crisp trigger, and consistent ammunition, delivers a level of repeatable performance that few other rifles can match. Are there outliers? Of course. Some high-end semis can produce unbelievably tight groups, but you'll usually pay a premium, and you'll still have more mechanical complexity at play. I don't know about you, but I want a rifle that gives me confidence every time I press that trigger for a long-range shot. Yes, ARs are fantastic for many roles, and I absolutely endorse having them in your collection. Lever guns can be a blast to shoot and are often just right for certain calibers in game. But when I need the best possible chance to put that bullet on target without mechanical variables messing up my shot, the bolt gun remains my top pick. But what do you think? Did I miss anything? Would you pick a semi-auto or a lever gun over a bolt gun for long-range shooting? Sound off in the comments. If this video was helpful or entertaining, please help our channel grow so we can make more of it for you. Click on the like button and share it with your friends. Subscribe and click the bell icon 
so you don't miss out on more exciting new videos. Thanks for watching.